All right, so in section 3.2, what we're going to look at is if we're multiplying or dividing two functions. In section 3.1, we learned some really cool, quick rules for if we were adding or subtracting or just taking the um, derivative of a polynomial function. So the question is, is if you're multiplying two functions together and then taking the derivative, is that the same as taking the derivative of each piece and then multiplying those derivatives together? Well, let's see. First, before we get started, notice that this guy is the same as 10, or I'm sorry, x to the 10th. So this derivative is going to be 10x to the 9th. Now the question is, is that the same as if we took the derivative of each piece and then multiplied them together? So the derivative of x to the 3rd would give us 3x squared. The derivative of x to the 7th would be 7x to the 6th. So what we would get is we would get 21x to the 8th power. Now is that the same as if we had combined them and then taken the derivative? The answer is no. No! So here's how we do this, is that we're going to use something called the product and the quotient rule. The product rule states that if you're multiplying two functions together, f times g, and you're finding their derivative, then that is the same as taking the derivative of the first function times the second function left alone plus the derivative of the second function times the first left alone. So that's f prime g plus g prime f. Now the other one says that if you're dividing two functions, that is taking the quotient, then the derivative is going to be, and I have a stupid song for this, just bear with me, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So if you have that little prime or that, um, gosh, what is it called? Man, I can't think of what it's called. If you got this guy, that means that you're taking the derivative. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of the following functions using these rules. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these and I'm going to try to denote which function is my f and which one is my g. So what two functions am I multiplying together? In this first problem, I have 3x to the fifth minus 2x, and then I have that whole thing times e to the x. So this function is going to be my f, and then this function is going to be my g. Okay, so I'm going to have f, and I'm going to have g. So first off, I need to find the derivative of f, which is going to be 15x to the fourth minus 2, and the derivative of g, which would be e to the x. So when I take the derivative of y, it's going to be f prime times g left alone plus g prime times f left alone. So my derivative then is going to be 15x to the fourth minus 2 times g, which is just e to the x, plus the derivative of g, so g prime, which is just, again, e to the x, times my f function left alone, so my original f function. And that would be my derivative. Now, if you expand and simplify this, you would get the same answer as if you expanded this and used a product rule. All right, let's look at the next one. So we have f of x equals the square root of x divided by e to the x. Now, because we're dividing, we have to use a quotient rule. So my top part, or my f function, is going to be the square root of x. My bottom function is going to be e to the x. So again, the derivative of the bottom is e to the x. The derivative of the top is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So when I take the derivative of this guy, it's going to be the bottom left alone times the derivative of the top minus the top left alone times the derivative, oh, my bad. So 
So the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So my derivative in this case would be e to the x times the derivative of the top, so 1 half x to the negative 1 half, minus, now the top left alone, times the derivative of the bottom, which is still e to the x, all over the bottom squared. Great, and you can simplify the answer out. I just want to see that you guys know how to do it um, using those rules so that you're really understanding the calculus. All right, now on the next one, again, what rule are we going to have to use? We're going to use the quotient rule. That's right, because we're dividing. So, again, our top is going to be 3x. Our bottom is going to be x cubed minus e to the x. So, my top function is going to have the derivative 3. My bottom function is going to have the derivative 3x squared minus e to the x. So when I take the derivative, again, it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now that order of the top times the derivative of the bottom minus the bottom times the derivative of the top, you have to keep that order or your answer is going to have the wrong negative sign. So this is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And again, that would be your answer. You're all done. Nice job. All right, now for D, I see that uh, fractions really staring me in the face, so I know I'm going to have to use a quotient rule. So we have the bottom, and then we have the top. Now, when I take the derivative of the top, here's the thing. If I have to take the derivative of x squared times e to the x, I can't combine those guys Right? They're not just two bases, like both base x or both base e. They have different bases, so I can't just smush their exponents together. So what I have to use here is that I have to use the product rule. So that's going to be the derivative of the first times the second left alone plus the first left alone times the derivative of the second. By the way, these are going to get a lot more interesting when we start learning other rules like the chain rule and like derivatives of trig and stuff. Then the derivative of the bottom is going to be 3x squared plus 7e to the x. All right, so the derivative is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top, which remember we had to use the product rule to find that. minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now what you guys are going to find when you're doing your homework is you're going to find that maybe you're going to have a lot easier time finding the derivative and then simplifying it's going to be the more difficult part. If you find that simplifying is going to be the more difficult part, what I suggest you do is I suggest that you type your solution into your calculator or into Wolfram Alpha, and sometimes it'll spit out a simplified solution for you, right? So it'll actually go through all the work of canceling, grouping, things like that. <clears throat> also, if you have a question about simplifying, you can always just send me an email. All right, now we're going to work with finding the first and the second derivative of some functions. So we want to find f prime and f double prime. That's another way of saying we want to find the first and the second derivative. So really it should say y prime and y double prime. So when we find the derivative of this first piece, we have 4, or I'm sorry, x to the fourth plus 7 times e to the x. So we want to find the derivative of that, so that's going to be... <coughs> 
x to the third times e to the x plus x to the fourth plus 7 times e to the x. So I did the derivative of the first part times the second left alone plus the first part left alone times the derivative of the second. Now what I want to do is that I want to find the second derivative. So remember, finding the second derivative just means I need to find the derivative of this piece here. So here on this first piece and the second piece, I have to use a product rule again. So I'll go ahead and do these in different colors. The derivative of that guy is going to be 12x squared times e to the x plus 4x cubed times e to the x. And now I need to use the product rule when I'm finding the derivative of this piece. So that's going to be plus, and then the derivative of that piece is going to be 4x cubed times e to the x plus x to the fourth plus 7 e to the x. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. <clears throat> Notice that each piece has an e to the x in it. So what I can do is I can factor that e to the x out, and I could have done that on the first derivative as well. So that's going to be e to the x times, and then I'm going to have x to the fourth plus 7 plus, and then I'm going to have 12x squared plus, and then I have 4x cubed plus 4x cubed, that's going to give me 8x cubed. Alright, so I decided to erase one of those examples, not a big deal, uh, just accidentally used a rule that we haven't learned yet, that happens. Anyway, so for the next one, let's suppose that f of 5 equals 1, g of 5 equals 8, f prime of 5 equals 3, and g prime of 5 equals 2. Now what we want to do is that we want to find the derivative of these two functions at x equals 5 when they're being multiplied and then when they're being divided. So using the derivative rule, I know that if I'm taking the derivative of f times g, that's going to be f prime times g plus g prime times f. So that f prime, I'm going to have f prime of 5 times just regular g of 5 plus g prime of 5 times f of 5. So what is g prime of 5 then? Well, they told us up here that, or I'm sorry, what's f prime of 5? They told us it was 3 times g of 5 is 8, g prime of 5 is 2, and f of 5 is 1. So now that we have it written out symbolically and then we can plug our numbers in, what we are going to get is 24 plus 2, which is going to give us a slope of 26. Now, similarly, what we did for a, we're going to do for b. So b is asking, hey, if we're dividing these two functions, what's the slope of these two functions divided at 5? Well, that's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Again, we're going to plug 5 in for each of these functions. So what's g of 5? Okay, g of 5 is 8 times f prime of 5, which is 3, minus f, which is 1, g prime of 5, which is 2, all divided by just regular old g squared, so that's going to be 8 squared. Now when we do that, we're going to get 24 minus 2, which is going to give us 22 divided by 64, and that is going to simplify out to 11 over 32. All right, now our very last example is let's say that we're given a graph of functions f and g, Okay, and what we want to do is that we want to combine them by multiplication and division. So when we combine them by multiplication, we're going to call it the function u. We combine them by division, we're going to call it the function v. 
So let's say that we want to find u prime of 1. So just like the previous example, that's going to be f times g prime at 1. So that's going to be f prime at 1 times g left alone at 1 plus g prime of 1 times f left alone at 1. So let's look at these real quick. First off, if I look at my function f, which is in red on the graph, f prime of 1. Okay, well first off, f of 1 is going to give me 2 because I have the point 1 comma 2. f prime of 1, that's saying, hey, what is the slope here? Okay, so if I look, I'm going to do rise over run because this is a straight line. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, 2. So that's going to give me a slope of 2. All right, let's do the same thing for g. So g is going to be in blue. So g of 1 is going to be 1. And g prime of 1, let's look here. So again, this is a straight line, so I can just do rise over run. So that's going to go 1, 2 down, 1, 2 over. Now because it's going down, it's going to have a negative slope. So what my answer here is going to be is it's going to be 2 times 1 minus 1 times 2, which means they're going to cancel each other out, and I'll have a slope of 0. All right, let's look at the next one. So let's do v prime of 5. So that would be f divided by g prime at 1. So that would be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top whoops, times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. All over the bottom squared. So again, we're going to look at our functions at 1, or I'm sorry, at 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So first I'm going to go ahead and look at g. So here I have the point 5, comma 2, and the slope here, well, again, because it's a straight line, I can just do rise over run. So I go 1, 2, 3 over, and 1, 2 up. So that's going to be 2 over 3. So again, 1, 2, 3 over, 1, 2 up. So that's going to be my slope. Now if I look at f, okay, I'm going to have the point 5 on the 3, and then what's the slope there? Well, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 over and 1 down. So my slope then is going to be negative 1 third. Remember, it's rise over run, so since I went down, I have a negative, and I went 3 over. That's why that 3 is in the denominator. So if I plug this into my formula, what I'm going to have is g of 5, g of 5 was 2, times what was f prime of 5? So what was the slope at 5? That was negative 1 third, minus, now what was f of 5? f of 5 was 3, times, and then what was the slope of g at 5? It was 2 thirds. Okay, all divided by g of 5 squared. So what was g of 5 again? It was 2 squared, so that would give us 4. Great, and then if we simplify that out, what we are going to get is negative 2 thirds. Alright, so remember, if you're multiplying or dividing, you can't just take the derivative of each piece and multiply and divide them. You have to stick to these rules, the product rule and the quotient rule.